It's real good to be here this morning. And uh, I'll let you go anywhere just to preach the word. Uh, turn with me to Matthew 5. <coughs> first 16 verses so we can get a background for what Jesus is uh, speaking about here. Uh, Matthew 5, 1 through 16. <clears throat> and seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out, and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this portion of thy word. And as we search thy word this morning, I pray that you would uh, remove other thoughts that might hinder it. But Lord, just uh, keep our minds upon thy word, upon this uh, certain uh, portion. I pray that the words that I say would not be my own, but would be thine. So Lord, just have your own way. May the Holy Spirit have his uh, freedom this morning to speak to heart. May people not say no to Jesus, but say yes to him as, as you speak. So we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want us to notice the 13th verse. Verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Let's think about this verse this morning. Jesus is speaking here, and he says, Ye are the salt of the earth. He's speaking to us this morning. He's speaking to the Christians. He says, Ye are the salt of the earth. Now, uh, he says, he's speaking to Christians. Now, uh, a person that is not a Christian, this doesn't apply to that person. He says that the believers are the salt of the earth. And I think uh, we need to come to this verse and uh, think about the application. Because he goes on to say that if the salt has lost its savor, that it is good for nothing. If a Christian is living for the world, is not in close fellowship with Jesus, he isn't doing anybody a bit of good. He needs to be in close relationship to Jesus Christ. Now I think uh, this last week I, I came to this verse and thought about it, and I thought of three ways how Christians are like salt. And I want you to think about this with me a little bit. Uh, I thought about uh, salt purifies used as an antiseptic and Christians can purify they can be on fire for the Lord and soul win secondly salt as you know here in Minnesota a lot more than Colorado they uh, put it on the roads to melt the ice and the snow and uh, a lot of the cars are rusted out because of it uh, <clears throat> of course Colorado you know we, we don't have that out there uh, <laughs> and so Christians can give war uh Christians can give warmth by being close to Jesus, 
by living a, a consistent life for him can uh, make other Christians want to be the same way. They can make unsaved people want to be Christians. Then thirdly, salt is used to preserve. And we, uh, I believe today, are preserving the world from judgment by our faithfulness to Christ. First of all, in purifying, when I come to this topic, I really, uh, you know, I feel that this is one of the most important doctrines of the Bible, but it's uh, left out the most, this soul winning business. Across America, Christian churches are, are just saying uh, no. They, they come to the verses that say that you're to be witnesses in all the world for me. You're to, to even be persecuted for me. And yet many Christians will skip over those verses. They're not afraid to study the Bible, the portions that uh, uh, they aren't afraid to go deep in the Word. In, mo in most of the Bible, but when they come to some of these verses, for instance in Acts where it says that they went from house to house breaking bread with one accord, it seems like they just skip over it. Morning, I don't want us to do that. I want us to come to these uh, portions of the scripture and then take them for what they are and apply it to our heart. And let's be honest with ourselves. Are we, are we lackadaisical in our Christian lives? Are we witnessing like we should? If we aren't, then let's be honest with ourselves and, and say to Christ that we, we want to be witnesses to thee, here in Seeker or wherever I am. And I want to be a soul winner for thee. Proverbs 11.30 says that he that wants souls is wise. I believe this morning that the most important thing for a Christian to do is to win souls. I believe that with all my heart. Out in Denver, I've had the opportunity to work in rescue missions. And I've seen men, drunken bugs, come into that rescue mission. Their whole life was wrecked. They've been divorcees, been drunkards. And yet when they met Jesus face to face, they accepted Christ as Savior. I saw that person transformed. And I say that the greatest miracle that Christ performs today is when he saves a person from hell and sets that person on his way to heaven. The Bible says that when a person becomes a Christian, he is a changed creature. Behold, all things have passed away. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And we as Christians need to get this vision of getting out and, and witnessing wherever we are. We need to be seven days a week Christian, not just one day a week. I believe this with all my heart. That this is the most important thing. You go through the New Testament, especially. Speaking to New Testament Christians. And it said, it, time and time again, it speaks about that we're to be witnesses. For instance, in Acts 1.8, let's turn to that. Acts 1.8. It's emphasized time and time again. <coughs> Acts 1.8, but you shall receive power. Now I think a lot of Christians don't have the power of the Holy Spirit in their lives, and this is one reason they aren't winning souls. They aren't, they aren't serious enough about the business to get down and, and mean business, to get down on their knees and to ask Christ for the power. And he says, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And time after time, in the second chapter, towards the last of the, the chapter there, in the 41st verse, it says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. You see, these uh, Christians in, in Acts, they were out winning souls. And here they added 3,000 souls to the church. And then towards the last of the chapter, the 46th and 47th verse, and they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. And then over in the fifth chapter, the last verse of that chapter, Acts 5.42, And daily in the temple in every house they ceased not to teach and to preach Jesus Christ. We find here... Uh, daily evangelism and daily in the temple, church evangelism and in every house, house evangelism and they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ it's a, it's a, a shame how many Christians aren't serious about this business of soul -eating. and how many are, are evading the scriptures that say that we're to be witnesses unto him 
Now I want us to look at the Great Commission in Matthew 28, 19, and 20. I think I could stand up here and talk all day and it probably wouldn't do as much good as just a couple verses from the Bible. In Matthew 28, 19, and 20 it says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you all the way even unto the end of the world. Now I want us to notice five verbs here. It says to go, first of all. That's the trouble, Christians. We aren't going. It isn't going to do any good until we go until we realize that Christ is going to use it. We have the power. Jesus says you'll have the power of the Holy Spirit. But then he says, Go. Go ye, therefore, and teach. And over in Mark 16, 15, uh, uh, this is translated preach. Go ye, therefore, and preach. It says to preach the gospel to every creature over in Mark. And here I think this is uh, how it should be uh, translated. Go ye, therefore, and preach all nations. In other words, the first thing before you can teach them about the, the Lord is to win them to Christ first. To preach the gospel and then the person will be saved and then they'll receive the word. Go ye therefore and preach all nations. And then after they're won to Christ, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And then it says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have, what does it say, commanded you. He says, teaching them whatsoever I have commanded you. Now what is, has he commanded us? He's commanded us to go ye therefore into all the world preaching the gospel. So you see this uh, in New Testament evangelism uh, a person goes he preaches, then he baptizes baptizes and then the, that convert, he goes teaches and, and so on. It's just a, a, the way of this verse seems to teach to, to us this morning. Go, preach, baptize and then teaching them Again, to go, uh, preach, baptize, and then teaching. You see, uh, the first thing I believe after a person is born again, uh, after they get in this word, they should uh, should realize that their their calling of Christ is to win souls, is to go go about this business of winning souls. Now, another way that uh, salt is used is, uh, as we know, is to give heat. And I think Christians. Uh, in a way, can give warmth today, uh, especially in this world. I know many Christians are are in a turmoil. I've been this way many times. We're in a turmoil, wondering what we're going to do. This world is going so fast. Uh, seems like everything's uh, changing so fast. This world is so changed. Uh, it's just changing all the time. And I think that Christians need to have a consistent life for Christ, and they need to to have this warmth of the, of Christ in them. They have, have to have this. Uh, happiness in him. I think Christians should be the happiest people in all the world. Don't you think we ought to have be the happiest people? Don't you think we have the most to be happy about? I, I remember before I was a Christian, and then the change that took place just like that when I accepted Christ. And I'll tell you, I, I just felt a different person. I knew that right then I was headed toward heaven. And I, I felt that I was the happiest person in all the world. And as I said, I've seen people transformed. And I've seen the, the, the smile that came on their face when they became a Christian. And I think that we should be the happiest people in the world. Some, uh, I've heard uh, some people say that we shouldn't say that Christians should be happy because, uh, you know, we should say that they have the joy in their heart, but we shouldn't say happy because that's uh, used too much in the world, uh, as uh, happy is used in, in connection with the world. But I believe that this morning that we can use the word happy because uh, I found some references that uses it. In Deuteronomy 33:29, says, "Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency? And thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places." All right now, happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord. Get people saved by the Lord. Happy art thou. And there might be someone here this morning that would like to be happy. They, they, don't, they don't know how to, how to find the satisfaction in the Lord. Well, there is a way. Christ died for your sins. And if you'd like to have that peace and joy in your heart and the, the peace that satisfies, the only way is through accepting Christ as Savior. 
Well, you might be happy for a while and think that the world's really going good. But then there'll be that time when everything will upset and change that. You see, they act a lot of times of lucky satisfied. And uh, so people get their cigarette and light them up and think that's going to satisfy. But let me tell you this morning that there's only one thing that satisfies, and that's Christ. And uh, we need to know Him as Savior to have the satisfaction in our soul, the peace and joy that lasts for eternity. Really, they should have they should have all that add something else. I think it's really uh, misleading to a lot of people in the world. Then in Proverbs 14, 21, 14, 21, he says here that uh, he that despiseth his neighbor sinneth, but he that hath mercy on the poor, happy is he. I believe that the poorest person in the world is the one without Christ. And if a person has mercy on the poor, happy is he. And uh, Christians, a lot of times, this goes right back to the first point. We don't have, we don't, don't have a burden for souls. And the, the best way to get that burden is to go into the world and preach the gospel. We'll get that burden for souls. And then he says that if you have the mercy on the poor, if you realize that there's a heaven and a hell, if you realize that people are going to hell, then happy is he that has mercy on the poor. Many times we need to just drive down the street and, and uh, maybe stop the car and watch people walk by on the sidewalk and just wonder about that one person there. Maybe, maybe she is a Christian or maybe not. Most likely not. Maybe there, there's a man there that might not be a Christian. And yet, what am I doing about it? Am I helping the cause any? Am I witnessing for Christ? We need to be in this business, Christians. James 5 uh, is speaking about temptation and then we come to that 11th verse in James 5 and it says that we count them happy which endure which endure temptation and this is another way that Christians can be happy in the work of the Lord is by not yielding to Satan Satan is a, a really you know we think about him he has two horns and a, uh, we really think of him as a, a horrible creature but really Satan is a beautiful creature he's an angel of light and he's the sneakiest uh, creature that, the, that there is. He'll come by and say, all right, you, know, you can do this, you can do that. Say that uh, Jesus didn't really say that you couldn't do that. And then he'll, he'll have you just uh, cornered before you know it. And you'll be doing things you thought you'd never do in your life. He's really sneaky. But we, we find that if we'll uh, endure temptation, happy is he. So many of us are just beaten Satan has us whipped in every way. But if we just say no to Satan and take Christ at his word, we, we would be the happiest person in the world. Now thirdly, Saul is used to preserve. And I believe that if it wasn't for the faithfulness and prayers of Christians today, that this world may have met with judgment long ago. I believe that, uh, that many Christians today uh, are really faithful in the, in the work of the Lord in prayers. You know, this is something amazing when we come to this about the prayer life. How many of us really pray? I really got a, a blessing out of the message that Brother Salstrom preached uh, here a few Sundays ago about prayer. About how many people really, really pray and spend time with God in prayer. Here we have the Almighty God, the, the one that, that just formed the earth, just created the earth, created, the, created man. And we can talk to him through his son. And yet, we don't take time to do it. We'd rather talk to some of our other friends than to Christ. We have so many things going on. But the thing is, we've got to make up our mind what's the most important thing in our life. Is the most important thing Christ, or is it something else? Is our most important business soul winning and living for Christ? If it is, I believe that we would spend more time in prayer. Now let's notice this verse again in Matthew 5 and think about it. It says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden 
underfoot of men. I wonder if we are living for Christ this morning, if we are on fire for him. This day and age is no different than any other. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we can have the power of the Holy Spirit right now. And we can be winning souls for him every day. If we just make up a mind we're going to do it, and if we just yield all to Jesus Christ in our lives. Let's bow our heads together. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this service this morning, for the opportunity of giving forth thy word. And Lord, I know I'm not worthy to do this, but I'm thankful for thy calling. Lord, we confess this morning that we are needy people. We're uh, living in a, a sinful world, a world where Satan would, would uh, throw us in the pit of hell if he could have his way about it. But we're thankful that Jesus cares for each one of us, that you would uh, protect us from it. Help us to realize our responsibility to thee. Now, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I believe this morning that the, the Holy Spirit is speaking to hearts. And if there is a, a Christian here that would just like to say with me that I would like to be filled with the Holy Spirit, I would like to be a better witness for Christ, I'd like to be a soul winner. And as I go about my daily life, I'd like to win souls to Christ. I realize this, that this is the most important thing for me to do. If you really feel this in your heart, would you say it with me and raise your hand and say this this morning that I realize now that this is the most important thing to me is winning souls. With every head bowed and every eye closed, would you put your hand up and put it down? And yeah, I see those hands. Yes. Anybody else? Just say with me. Put, yes, amen. Thank you for the hands. Anybody else that would just say that, amen. Yeah. That th I realize now that I, would, I want to be a soul. Amen. I saw that hand. Yes. God speaking to hearts. Many hands have been raised. And I, I believe that the Lord is speaking to hearts this morning. Anybody else would put their hand up and just put it down. And say with me that I realize that, that, uh, that Christ wants me to be, to be a soul winner. This is the first step to being a soul winner. Is to make it, to realize that you need to be. To have the conviction if you never have this conviction, you'll never be a soul winner for Christ. Is there someone else that would put their hand up? Yes, amen. Anyone else? We'd just like to pray for all these hands. Anybody else? Yes, amen. All right. Many hands have gone up. Now, I, I never preach without giving uh, an invitation for hands of those that are not sure that they're saved. This is why Christ called me to preach. The most important thing was to, to win souls. And if there is one person this morning that would say that I am not positive beyond a shadow of any doubt that I'm a Christian, would you just raise your hand and say, I'd like prayer that before this day is over, I'd accept Christ as Savior. Is there one hand that would go up and say this with me this morning? That you'd uh, like to know for sure that you're a Christian. Anybody at all? All right, now everybody stand. Everybody stand. We're going to sing <coughs> softly and tenderly, page 201. And if there's any, anybody at all with a need this morning that would like to come down here and say that uh, maybe that you want to be a better soul and you want these people to know that you want to be mean business for Christ so that they can pray for you, you just come this morning and stand at the front of the church and say, I want to be a soul winner for Jesus. And you don't realize how much prayers will help you in your, in your witnessing for Christ. Other Christians' prayers will help you a, a whole lot. In James it says that an effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So as we sing the first verse, if you would, would come and say that you want to be a soul winner for Christ, just come on the first verse as we sing. Sing it softly, softly and tenderly. So, the end. 